Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Haig and I am so excited that you get to join me today. Thanks so much to Square and Vistaprint for sponsoring this and creating this incredible workshop. We are going to be talking about creating incredible branded experiences in a cost-effective way, which I know you guys are going to love because in this environment, who wouldn't love that, right? If you really enjoyed today's experience, I highly recommend checking out the rest of Square's educational workshops. But let's dive into what exactly we're gonna be talking about today and honestly, why you should be listening to me. Like I said before, my name is Elizabeth Haig. I have been in the brand and marketing world for roughly 15 years now. Am I showing my age? <laughs> but I've helped hundreds of brands level up from emerging enterprise to enterprise and I've even co-founded my own branding agency and held every position under the sun in the brand role that you can think of from photographer to all the way now to brand and marketing expert. And I'm gonna help you guys today create incredible branding experiences. So let's talk a little bit about what a brand is before we start diving into branded experiences. So what exactly is a brand? Everyone always thinks when you hear the word brand, they instantly think logo, design. And yes, those parts are a very big portion of what your brand is, the visual look and feel. So we're talking logo, sub logo, typography, photography, that is a really big part of your brand and a great way to communicate to customers. But there's also a secondary piece that people have a tendency to skip over in their brand development. Mostly I think because they're not quite sure exactly how to handle this portion. So I'm gonna break it down really easily for you. So you've probably heard multiple times that your brand is not your logo or your logo is not your brand. But I don't really think people spend enough time explaining exactly what they mean by that. So what does that actually mean? So there's a secondary portion of your brand that's not just how it looks, but how it feels. So we're talking about building a brand, a business brand, like a persona. So I would think of a brand as the communication vehicle of your business intent, like who you are, what you stand for, and it's the vehicle you're gonna use to communicate visually, of course, but also in a persona. So how you make people feel, how you talk to customers, what exactly are you saying to them? So a persona shows up in written content, it shows up, up in customer service, how you treat a customer, and it shows up in little touch points like branded experiences. So it's really important to understand that a brand really truly isn't just your logo. It's not just about looking pretty. It's about feeling good as well and having a set plan in place to communicate to your customers the feelings that you're choosing to communicate. Let's talk a little bit about brand strategy and put a plan in place so that all of the work you just did for building a great brand and getting that foundation actually makes it out of your paper and pen experience out into the real world when you're putting together a branded experience. Brand strategy, what is it? A brand strategy is a really simple plan that you put in place to help you stay successful in your communication and understanding your brand versus what's out there in the real world. So three components of a brand strategy. Three things that you need to take care of before you go out and start marketing like crazy or start creating branded experiences. Number one, pretty easy. What is your business value? What are you bringing to the table? Who are you? I know it sounds rudimentary, but a lot of times people skip over these pieces and then they get out there and then they're marketing things and they get confused as to what exactly they're trying to say to customers. So taking the step and talking, number one, like what you stand for, what are your values as a company? What are you bringing to the table? Helps you really stay clear out in marketing. So what, what value are you bringing? Who are you? What are you doing in the market? Number two, it's all about your customers. You need to really understand who your customers are to wrap your arms around creating a plan to communicate to them. So I'm not talking just about like, oh, uh, age or how much money they make or maybe their gender. We're really talking about understanding your customers and their experiences with your business as well as 
what problems they might be having. So you can see easily how the first part and the second part relate really well together. So what your purpose is and then what customers are experiencing, like what problems they have should walk hand in hand. So you should be bringing something of value to your customers and you should understand what value that is from your customer's perspective. So it's not enough anymore to just go out there and be like, I'm targeting people on planet Earth from ages zero to 100, male and female. No, that's not gonna cut it anymore. You have to focus on who your customers are, what do they need from you, and then serve that up to them really easily. The third component, the third thing that's really important to remember in brand strategy is competitors. And when I say competitors, people usually get a little freaked out. They're like, ooh, because we're talking about people that are potentially taking customers away from you. But in a brand strategy, it's a lot more simplistic. When you look at customers and competitors, you really should be thinking, okay, my business is out there on this landscape. We want to take stock of who else I'm competing against. What are they doing? And make sure that your company is being better or somewhat different than the competitors that you're competing against. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So now that we know what a brand strategy is and we know what a brand is, you're probably asking yourself, why should I take the effort to make this plan? Why should I put this in place? I'm going to hit you with a stat. Are you ready? 73% of customers say that great brand experience keeps them loyal to that brand. 73%. That is huge. What that means is that customers are yearning for a place for you to tell them that you are the brand for them. Customers want you to make them feel good about where they spend their time and their money. Quite frankly, they're inundated with so many options, so many choices, so many competitors constantly being advertised to between Instagram and newsletters and billboards and TV spots and print. It's just a constant roll of constant marketing. Like They just are constantly being inundated. If you can make it easy for them to choose you, you should definitely do that. Why wouldn't you do that? You should definitely do it. <laughs> At the end of the day, though, a plan really doesn't have to be that difficult. It can be pretty simple and it also can walk with you and evolve over time. You can improve it and make it better. So hopefully that helps you understand why you should make that effort and how important it really is. Because to be frank, this experience leads you all the way into what we're going to talk about next, which is what is a brand experience? So what exactly is a branded experience? We've talked about what a brand is. We've also talked about brand strategy, setting a, a foundation or a plan in place of how you're going to communicate. So what exactly is a branded experience? A branded experience is how you influence a customer's feelings when they interact with your business or your products. It's literally just taking the time to think through what kind of emotion you want to leverage every time a customer experiences your business or your products. And where does that experience live? It lives in marketing activities. So previously you're we talking about setting the foundation of visually what you look like, what's your persona, and then making decisions about your brand strategy, like who are you gonna talk to, who's out on the market. So branded experience is something that you apply to an activity to help really think through and influence how a customer feels emotionally about you. So we'll walk through some great examples coming up, but I wanna encourage you guys to think about something really, really important. Whether or not you tackle your brand, whether you build a brand strategy or get your visuals right or foundation persona, and whether or not you're really thinking about applying branded experiences in your marketing activities, your customers are having first impressions of you with or without that information. They don't care. They're already forming their own opinions, whether you do that work or not. This is your opportunity to, to take the chance to really influence how they feel about you. Step out into the world and say, hey, here's what I want you to feel. Here's what I want you to think. Here's how I'm gonna influence you. Really take an active part in creating incredible first impressions and not just leaving it up to the customer to do that work for you. You should absolutely think about that ahead of time. And again, it doesn't have to be a complicated plan. It doesn't have to be really expensive either. You don't have to have incredible design pieces. 
All you have to do is stay consistent, maintain your quality, think through your activities, and really put some effort into place in helping customers truly understand you and strong communication. That's really all. So now that we know what a branded experience is and we've talked about brand strategy and your brand, let's dive into some great examples. I'm going to start with a digital experience and this experience can be applicable to a retailer or a restaurant, anyone that has goods to go or pick up service. So let's think this through pretty logically. So the first thing that you want to do is say, okay, say for example, you're a restaurant. They have to go orders. They've got a menu they've got, they've got people they need to get into the store to come pick up their food and they want to make some sales. So this is a great opportunity to create a branded experience because quite frankly, customers have lots of options for pickup or to go orders. How are you going to make them feel connected to your business? So the first thing the restaurant will do is step back and say, all right, this is a marketing activity that we do every day, every single week, month in, month out now. How do we make this a branded experience? So pre-planning includes identifying what emotion that they want to impart on the customers. So for this particular experience, it's a to-go order. They've got a menu that they need to post. They want to let the customer know that it's going to be really easy to work with them and make the customer feel like it's a breeze. They can come back anytime and they want to influence loyalty there. So first thing they do, they think through if they're going to post a menu, how do we make it easy for the customer to get that information? So they do things like get on Instagram and post the menu in a, a body post and say, hey, here's the phone number to contact us. And they include the menu in a scroll, including pictures of what the dishes might look like. And they really say, hey, we're gonna make it easy for you to come to our place, get something where you don't have to cook. Maybe the experience even encourages them to feel like the customer's like gonna get a local fresh meal that they have to put zero effort in easy to pick up. Here's where to get it. Bing, bang, boom. In stories, they can also link to make it really easy to tap, to go directly to an ordering experience or pick up the phone and call them instantly. It's all about consistency at this stage. If you want to make something really easy to experience for a customer, you have to keep those contact points super consistent. From there, once that branded experience launches and that customer comes in, there should be some follow-up digitally. You should say, hey, my emails are gonna make it really easy for the customer to communicate with me. Once we get the order, there's a branded email that's sent out to the customer saying, we've received your order, it'll be ready in XYZ minutes. So once that customer gets that communication, they go, wow, okay, they're really on top of it. They're letting me know what's going on. They're letting me know that they have my order. That's great. A follow-up email, including when your order is ready to pick up, should include things like driving instructions. Where should this person park? Make it as super simple and easy for this customer to come get their stuff and get out of there as you can. And that all is going to work really well to impart, wow, this is a great touch point and customer experience. I'm really excited to, to go and try this new menu. I can't wait to get there. They're making it really easy. They're reducing my stress. They're communicating with me effectively. I love that. So some follow-up ideas on how to make sure that this branded experience continues to build loyalty over time is to go ahead in that little package experience the customer like picks up, say it's a food bag. Inside that bag, you can include printed pieces that are just one-time pieces that maybe even includes like a little written area for you to say, thank you, just really, really quickly. A human touch point to say, thank you so much for your business. We know that you have a lot of choices. We appreciate you coming and really purchasing from us. Come again. Inside, inside that little campaign can include an area where a potential loyalty discount for a future purchase. It can invite the customer to join a Facebook group, to get wine pairing ideas. The ideas here are limitless. There are so many that you could do to make that customer feel really engaged and excited to come back and feel like you've taken care of them. Just as an example, something that I experienced as a customer that made me super loyal to a brand, I purchased a tea to go. And when I came to pick up my tea, 
at the register, the point of purchase, there is a little sticker of that brand, that tea that I ordered. It was Rishi tea. And I fell so in love with the sticker. I thought it was the coolest design. I instantly picked it up along with my little cup of tea and the tea was so good. I was like, okay. And I put the sticker on my laptop and every time I open my laptop, I think about how badly I want a cup of tea. <laughs> Did you know that brands with superior customer experiences are 5.7 times more likely to have an increased revenue than their competitors? That is a huge win and is exactly the reason you should think about doing branded experiences when you're talking to customers. If they want it, give it to them and beat out your competitors who are not doing this activity. Branded experience, the end result should always be to have your customers come back and be completely loyal to you. So let's talk a little bit about branded experiences and customer loyalty and helping them remember who you are and have good experiences with you. So I'm gonna go over three examples. Example number one, small print pieces. This is a great place to maximize your budget and you can pick and choose what you'd like to do so you can leave something interesting with your customer. Just like we talked about in the restaurant example experience, you can easily do little pieces with handwritten notes, you could do little stickers or anything that will, you could leave with the customer that makes them feel like they're connected to you somehow. The second example would be to build an experience online. So say for example, you wanted to do a newsletter and communicate directly to the customer, or maybe you wanna make that experience a group experience. You can get on Facebook and create a place where you release special announcements or create a VIP experience where someone gets exclusive information either via newsletter or a Facebook group. And then after that particular amazing group gets the information first, it gets released out into the public. So that's an incredible way to make your customers feel engaged and like you're thinking about them and that there's a section of VIPs and they're really excited to get email communications and Facebook communications from you. And that's all gonna be amazing to create that branded experience for the customer. So the third example I'd love to talk to you guys about is offering exclusive discounts to your customers and helping them share them with their friends. It's always a really good idea to think about a branded experience where you say to a customer, look, we loved working with you. You're exactly the kind of customer we love having around. We think that you should invite your friends to have the same great experience you just did. And that's a great way to create a loyalty program that invites and rewards the customer to come into a loyalty program and say, hey, if you tell your friends about this, we're gonna give you some bonus points or a percentage off or potentially earning some good karma bucks to apply to our next product purchase, all for just doing the work of sharing it with your friends and we absolutely appreciate you. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about in-store experiences. So for those of you out there that are, they own a shop, you own a brick and mortar, and you're thinking about reopening and how you can make your in-store experience better, I'm gonna lead with a big example and then I'll lead with a much smaller example. So the huge example, Target. I love using Target as a brand experience example because they are just nailing it. So anyone that's in the US will definitely understand this story. For those of you outside the US, just not along. I'll explain a little bit more. So Target in-store experience. So let's talk about their brand tagline. Their tagline is expect more, pay less. And quite often they invite huge designers to come in and design products or clothing or goods to help get the customer experience to expect more and then pay less for it. So we'll think about it in this way. When you walk into Target stores, they're now even designing their displays to show. So if you go into like a bathing suit section, they're now showing items like sunblock. They're showing items of like the newest uh, little cute tumblers to put your little wine or your pina coladas in. 
They're looking at the customer experience and saying, you're here to shop for a bathing suit, but here are all the other ways that you can have a really great time outdoors. And we highly encourage you to take a look at these additional products that are all designed really cute and lit really well. And that is telling the customer, hey, we're thinking about you. We're thinking about you and we want you to go ahead and fulfill your dream of having a great outdoor experience. So your intention is to buy a bathing suit, you walk away with everything that you need, including tiki torches. How did that happen? It's because Target is really that good at their story and their brand experience. Here's a great secondary example. So I worked with a client called Crazy Rumors. They're local to me here in Atlanta and they create incredible lip balms. They're cruelty-free, vegan. They're made of only really great stuff. And all of the flavors are super duper fun with lots of really great names like bubblegum or banana split. Oh, natural. The product is just really great. And so they came to me looking for a brand experience and they asked me to redesign all of their product marketing. So once we finished their experience of getting a new brand, um, making sure that they are, had a great brand strategy and thinking through um, what kind of persona we wanted to give them. It came time to just design a display, a POP display. So I stood back and looked at all of the competitors on the market uh, that also have vegan, cruelty-free, really feel-good lip products. And I asked myself, in what ways can we make the shopping experience really fun for the consumer and make crazy rumors stand out among everybody else on this shelf. So bringing it back down to product marketing and product engagement and product packaging, taking stock of what's out there in the market and thinking through like, we have really cool colors and flavors. Why not make exciting packaging that's really, really bright and really enticing compared to the rest of the packaging out there that's kind of vanilla and bland and boring. Let's do something that walks brand promises, fulfills the brand persona of being exciting and happy and thoughtful and create an experience where the customer can easily choose the product because it's the most fun option that's available to them. Lip balm doesn't have to be boring, right? Just because it's a great product doesn't mean that it has to be serious. And customers have loved that. After releasing this, Crazy Rumors revenue went up and sales started to tick up. Whole Foods took a look at them and they could not wait to get them in stores. And customers just really responded very positively and they have a, a strong brand experience thanks to great packaging. So let's talk about custom online events. Maybe you don't have an entire store to create an experience, or maybe you don't have the ability to create printed pieces at a point of purchase sale. Let's be honest, our world right now is pretty much all digital. So how do you use custom online events to create a feeling of connection and get goods and services that you're producing into the hands of people more quickly and effectively. So here are a couple of really great examples. Online classes are a huge boon and resource and wealth of information for customers and people are really gobbling them up. They're also a great place to put branded experiences. So say for example, you're a restaurant and you create a little DIY kit of cacio e pepe. It's the pasta dish with cheese and pepper. It's so super simple literally anyone can do this. So let's say you put that little experience together and in conjunction with that, it's a Wednesday night cooking class on Zoom. The chef at your restaurant goes ahead and says, okay, on Wednesday night, if you buy the Cacio Pepe DIY kit, you also get an online chef class with me and I will teach you how to make Cacio Pepe in a Zoom group with other people. And we're gonna all work in our kitchens together and have a really great time. Sounds like a lot of fun and it's a great way to do a branded experience that leaves the customer feeling like they got a lot for something that's really easy to do. If you're not into the heavy lifting of creating a class, that's completely fine. There are a lot of small micro branded experiences that you could execute that helps people feel a lot more connected to your brand. So I'll give you a couple of examples. One, let's say you're a bookshop and you have a book club and everyone's kind of missing that whole gathering together and reading and talking. This is a great example of Go on Zoom, get everybody together in the book club, assign a book beforehand, 
have them come together, let's drink coffee and discuss it, and you're getting exactly the same feeling, modified, but the same feeling we're all missing from our previous book club experiences. Another great example, let's say you're a candle shop and it makes a lot of sense to do a Facebook Live or an Instagram Live where you jump on and invite people to an end of day, 15 minute meditation, light a candle, take a moment, breathe, and all of a sudden you're connecting with your customers in a branded way. One of my favorite examples is from Flaviar. They hosted an online event where they invited people via Facebook and newsletter and Instagram. They made a big announcement where they invited everybody out there to create a custom whiskey blended recipe. And that recipe could be submitted to them that would be judged by an incredible whiskey expert. And the very best recipe was then emailed out to people to try in their own homes. I thought that was a really great experience, a brand branded way to influence the customer to have a positive experience, get active and engaged with that brand. And it did absolutely leave a lasting impression on me. I really want to share a story that had a huge emotional impact on me, something that I remember about a partnership branded experience that I think you guys would really love because partnerships in reality can span any experience and depending on what kind of business you guys are running, it can be kind of like, okay, what should I choose? What should I do? There's so many things that are just like available to me. I could do anything. Um, so let me share this really cool experience with you guys to kind of get your own creative juices flowing. So I worked with a growler shop as a client and right next door, they were in this really funky, cool plaza. It was a growler shop and right next door to the growler shop, was a kitty cat cafe. It had just opened. It was very cool. It was one of the first kitty cat cafes here in Atlanta. And the whole idea with the kitty cat cafe was that people come in, they could buy a cup of coffee and hang out with the cats and then eventually adopt those cats. So when I worked with my client, the growler shop, they were doing a whole rebrand and they were asking me like, how can we get our, our name out there? How can we like make people love us. And I was like, well, how about you partner with the business next door, the brand new kitty cat cafe, which had just been in all the papers, had a ton of PR done, was like well known for being a super cool place. And people were really excited about this new business. So I said, why don't you go next door? And every time they, someone adopts a cat from the kitty cat cafe, there's a, a thank you and a welcome package from that kitty cat cafe that features a discount for them to literally walk outside and go next door as a celebration to go in and buy some beer as a thank you for adopting a cat from the kitty cat association. And they loved that idea so much that they partnered with the kitty cat cafe and ended up making branded growlers with both the cat cafe's logo and the logo we designed for them and creating like this really cool takeaway in a growler so that every time someone adopted a cat they got a discount on beer a super cool like vip style growler that they literally could use over and over and over and over again and then they literally took from the cat adoption they walked out got a celebratory beer and went home and had an incredible experience not only getting a new family member, but getting celebrated and rewarded from another like-minded business uh, right in that plaza. It was so cool. And it, that memory sticks with me to this day. All right, guys. So before we wrap up, I want to leave you with three key points that I would love for you to consider while you are doing your branded experiences. So we talked about what a brand strategy is, what a brand is, and what branded experiences could be. We've given tons of examples to help you guys really think through your own strategies and what you'd like to do. Before we wrap, let's talk three ways to maximize your budget, because let's be honest, it can be really overwhelming. <laughs> There's a lot of options out there. So three big tips I would give you to help stay on budget and maximize the budget you do have. Number one, show up on the platforms where your customers are. There are so many options, especially when we're talking about social media. And to be honest, 
it's lots and lots of pressure to show up on every platform and do things really, really well. But it doesn't make any sense if you are marketing on a platform where your customers are not going to be reached. So here's a great example. So I used to work with a past client of mine called Biddle and Bob. They're now out there doing incredible work. They're a children's play company focused on talking directly to parents and telling those parents, your kids can play anytime, rain or shine, it doesn't matter. And their brand persona is awesome. So it makes a lot of sense that a children's uh, clothing company and they have uh, tons of other play items to go out into the world and get on Facebook where parents are or Instagram and showcase all of the cool other purpose clothing and all the really neat experiences they have to help kids engage with the outside world. Rain or shine, right? but it makes absolutely no sense for Biddle and Bop to show up on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is for people looking for jobs. They're not going to find their target audience on LinkedIn unless they're trying to create a branded experience of hiring employees. It just doesn't make sense, right? Number two, be consistent with your key information. Just like we talked about before, Define your brand, define your brand strategy, and decide what kind of emotions you want people to feel in a branded experience. It's important to identify the key information you want to stay consistent across your platforms, the ones that you choose. If you continue to give an inconsistent experience to customers, it's going to waste so much of your time and money, and it's going to frustrate people when they experience your brand. Be consistent wherever you are, and that will save you so much effort in the long run. Number three, focus on content that is relevant to your customer. So yeah, you could post anything you want, but if you wanna be maximizing your budget, maximizing your time, maximizing your branded experience touch points, make sure that what you are doing relates to your customer and is super relevant. Because if your customer at the end of the day doesn't get it or doesn't care, then that's just gonna be wasted time and effort on your part, as well as wasted budget to create all of these assets like blog posts or photos or branded campaign, only to fall on deaf ears. All right, guys, that wraps up for me. Again, my name is Elizabeth Haig and it's been my deep pleasure to teach you today about brand, brand experiences, and making them all cost effective and authentic for your customers. I am so excited to see what you guys go ahead and do with this information. Definitely keep me in the loop. I would love to see what you guys get up to next. If you loved this class, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to Square's Business Resource Center and look at all of their videos and articles. They've got lots of great information to continue your learning. And also, secondary, you can check out square.com slash events for more programming. Thank you so much again, and congratulations. Go out there, kill it!